Big Sandy Bear Coach, welcome to each and every one of you as we gather on this very beautiful ninth Sunday after the Festival of Pentecost and a few announcements we have to make. Uh, today, the flowers on the left side of the altar and in front of the lectern are in memory of Joanne Harvey. Her funeral, funeral services were held here, and we express our Christian sympathy to Ken and to his family this time with a loss for them and for each and every one of us as we remember Joanne and all that she will always mean to us that is good and kind and perfect. And thank you for the flowers. And the flowers on the right-hand side of the altar are in honor and memory of my parents, my sister Jerry's parents, Elmer and Lois Grennard, who were married on August the 7th in 1937, sometime, sometime back. I don't remember that wedding, of course. So. <laughs> but thank you, Steve and Jerry, for being present with us and also for remembering our parents' uh, wedding anniversary today. And um, next Sunday and the following Sunday, the 9th and 16th, I will be taking some vacation Sundays, and we are, we're going to be very blessed to have Max Abel, who has preached here before. We'll be bringing the message for that day. And over the next two, two weeks, we'll be Max. We just are grateful to Max for agreeing to do this for us, and we I know you'll look forward to that. And, this time we'll always remain seated for everything until we get to the uh, closing to the benediction. Are there any other announcements that we should make that I didn't know about or forgot? <laughs> All right, then let us remain seated as we join in singing the first two verses of number 68. Let us pray. Gracious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation and abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, 
by the radical abundance of divine mercy. We have peace with you through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because your love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you, and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from the love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join our voices as one as we enter into this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time, Courtney will bless us and sing praise to God with special music. Courtney.
Thank you very much, Courtney. That was very beautiful and also very meaningful that we can trust and always have that trust. At this time, Lori Grenard will come to share with us in God's holy word the first two lessons. Good morning. Our first lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The psalm today is Psalm 17. Chapter, or I'm sorry, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7 and verse 15. The refrain is, give ear to my prayer, O Lord. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From you let my vindication come. Let your eyes see the right. Give ear to my prayer, O Lord. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. As for what others do by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. Veer to my prayer, O Lord. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for, for you will answer me. O oh God, incline your ear to me. Hear my words. <clears throat> Wondrously show your steadfast love, O oh Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. Hear to my prayer, O Lord. The Gospel reading this morning is from St. Matthew 14, 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Take the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. 
and they took up what was left over out of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. Introducing this text that we have just heard read from Matthew's Gospel, what Jesus had just heard was some very shocking news. His first cousin, very good friend and colleague in ministry, John the Baptist, had been murdered. His, he was beheaded and his head was presented at a party as a gift. Jesus, having human responses and being fully human, was informed of this horrendous event to someone he loved and I'm sure admired and was the last prophet, the forerunner to the Messiah. So Jesus undoubtedly wanted some time alone to grieve his cousin's death. But the crowds, they were needy, as we are, and they followed him to a lonely place, and they were desperate to hear his teachings and receive a healing touch. Now, interestingly enough, as we look at this gospel lesson, we see in it actually a very good reminder of the sacrament of Holy Communion. For it says here, there are four actions of communion are we take, we bless, we break, and we give. And this is what Jesus did. He took the loaves and fishes, blessed them, broke them, and gave them to the crowds. But it wasn't just a very, shall we say, routine feeding. There were tens of thousands of people there. And Jesus, as we shall see, fed them all. Charles Swindle a pastor and author tells us a story about a nine-year-old boy by the name of Danny. Danny came bursting out of his Sunday school class all excited. He tried to find his mom and dad, and finally he saw his dad and he grabbed his dad and yelled, that story of Moses and all those people 
Crossing the Red Sea was great. His father smiled and asked Danny to tell him about it. Well, Danny says, the Israelites got out of Egypt, but Pharaoh and his army chased them. So the Jews ran as fast as they could until they got to the Red Sea. The Egyptian army was getting closer and closer, so Moses got on his walkie-talkie and told the Israeli Air Force to bomb the Egyptians. Well, that, while that was happening, then the Israeli Navy builds a pontoon beach, bridge rather, across, so the people could cross over, and they made it. The dad was shocked. Is that the way they told you the story, Danny? Well, well, no, not exactly, Danny admitted. But if I told you the way they told it, you'd never believe it. <laughs> That's kind of the way it is with this account of Matthew's gospel of feeding probably up to 20,000 people with five loaves and two fish telling us that story. We just wouldn't believe it. Well, the point of the story of feeding the 5,000 is not to prove that miracles happen. We affirm, or I affirm, or hopefully all of us affirm that they do. The point of the story is to teach us that miracles still happen. They still are with us. We sometimes just don't call them miracles or see them that way. First, the story teaches us Jesus is the fulfillment of the word of the Lord. Jesus is the fulfillment of the word of the Lord. He is the Messiah for whom the world has been waiting. The Israelites had been waiting for the Messiah for some 400 plus years. There was a hunger in this group of Women, men, and children, they were gathered because they were hungering for the Messiah. And they kept asking, as they followed this man from Nazareth, they asked the question, is this the one? Is this the one? Is this the Messiah for whom we have been waiting centuries? And then the son begins to set. The end of the day draws near. They had been listening to this man for hours and seeing his disciples and others. And we know that there probably were as many as 20,000 people. It says there were 5,000 men and their families sitting there in a valley listening, trying to say and answer the question, is this the one? It was now time for dinner. And the disciples, perhaps out of care for their master, are probably more so feeling very hungry themselves, wanted to send the people away. Have them go away so we can go get something to eat. And Jesus surprises his disciples and asks them, Now, you feed the crowd. Well, the disciples resisted. They weren't dumb bunnies. They resisted. They knew that they only had a few loaves of bread and two fish. And they said to Jesus very specifically, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. But Jesus offers an opportunity for the 12 to see God at work, to see something other than the world they had come to know and understand. Jesus asks, for the loaves and the fish. Here we have the sacramental formula. Jesus takes them, Jesus blesses them, Jesus breaks them, and Jesus gives them. And there's enough for all gathered to eat. And interestingly enough, there, was left, there were leftovers not just any amount of leftovers now. You know, the gospel and the scriptures don't just simply kind of 
idly throw these things out there. There were leftovers, broken pieces that filled 12 baskets. Well, those 12 baskets, we, as we study the scripture, believe that means it fed the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 baskets represented the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel were being fed on this miraculous gift of love of bread and fish. And it ends and concludes with the very simple words, they were filled. Simply that. And they were filled. So first, this selection of scripture teaches us about Jesus being the fulfillment of the word, the one whom the prophets have spoken. And secondly, this passage teaches us we are to serve at the table of the Lord. We are to be the disciples at this table just like the disciples were that fed the 20,000. We may never know as we serve others that are serving a miracle. We are the servants and we are providers of miracles. In Irvington, the food pantry, here when we talk to a bereaving husband, when we speak with bereaved parents, when we go to a neighbor to share with a neighbor, when we celebrate a birthday, when we come together, we are coming as a miraculous representatives of the Church of Jesus Christ. We are sharing and multiplying Jesus' ministry over and over. It is the nature of God's kingdom to care and do miracles. And we pray, many of us daily, in the Lord's Prayer, that that kingdom may come to earth and be in us. The disciples are learning that God is at work and is not done. As they're handed the bread, they participate some, in something larger than themselves. Thousands are suddenly fed with food that did not exist before, unfolding blessings by the tens of thousands. So God is at work first in fulfilling his word in Jesus, Secondly, in calling us to be the servants at the table, to serve others. And third, we have been given the ability to use what we have been given. Use what God has given to us in terms of our lives, our resources, our talents. God has blessed us. We can use those blessings to multiply a thousandfold. In all the simplicity of our lives, the greatest gifts are produced. In 1872, at the age of 16, Booker T. Washington became a civic leader from the black community to lead this nation in so many ways decided he wanted to go to school. This was just some years after the freeing and emancipation of the slaves, of his family. He decided he wanted to go to school in 1872 when he was 16 years old. So he leaves home and he sets out and walks 500 miles approximately to the Hampton Institute in Virginia and presented himself to the head mistress of the school. Washington recalled, having been so long without proper food, a bath and a change of clothing, I did not make a very favorable impression upon her. And I could see at once there were significant doubts in her eyes, in her mind about me. Well, what seemed like hours, that were probably only a few minutes, she finally said to him, the adjoining recitation room needs cleaning. Take the broom and do it. A lesser person might have been insulted by being assigned menial work. Notice I said a lesser person would be insulted. Not a great person would have not been insulted. 
But Washington recognized immediately that this was his big chance to get into the Hampton Institute in Virginia. He swept the room three times, dusted it three times, cleaned the walls and the closets. Then he reported to the head teacher the job was finished. Well, she examined the room. She even took a handkerchief and wiped it across the top of the doors to see if there was any dust there. Not a particle of dirt, she said. You may enter this institution. As a 16-year-old, Booker T. Washington could not do many things. He did not have many financial, if any, resources. But he could clean a room, and he did it gloriously. And he became a blessing, great blessing, to this entire nation and into the world. Extraordinary living begins with ordinary gifts. We have ordinary gifts that God makes extraordinary. What gifts and graces do we have? What table is the Lord calling us to serve from? Seeing the world as Jesus sees it begins with, as the Gospel says, compassion. Jesus had compassion on the crowds. He looked at everyone he met with the eyes of compassion. Let us also practice that as a blessing to others, to look at the world through compassionate eyes. As I've said a couple of weeks ago, that word compassion is such a powerful word. In the Latin from which it comes, C-O-M means with. Passion means enthusiasm and strength with enthusiasm and strength. Let us practice looking at that world through compassion. We can make a difference. We do make a difference. And as he looked at the disciples who wanted to send the crowds away because they, the disciples, were hungry and the day was nearly done. And Jesus says, to them and to us, because we sometimes are that way too, of course, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat and drink. And so it is with us. We see the world, and God calls upon us to give the world something to eat, something to drink, something to wear, a house to live in. Jesus wasn't planning a picnic he was training his disciples as he's training us to see the world through the eyes of Christ. They were establishing, and we are establishing, the Holy Spirit's work, the kingdom of God among us. Whenever we see needs, large or small, with those we know in families and among friends, those we do not know and those we have never met and will never meet around this world. No matter our resources, large or small, we can give them and bring them because Jesus will multiply them a thousandfold. He will do a miracle through us and through all those who see the world through the eyes of Jesus. We do not bear the name of Christ just as a name, but we bear the name of Christ as a way of life. Thanks be to God for this wondrous gift, the gift that we too are miracles in this world in which we find us ourselves. Amen. I invite us as we remain seated to affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us affirm together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join in singing the final two verses of number 665. leave this center of worship and go into the world to take with you a host or a wafer that is with also grape juice and it's at the ex exit to the church and the entrance to the church and if you want to need more for yourselves or for someone at home or you want to share them with some friends please feel free to take as many as you as you desire for we, we are reminded that our Lord Jesus Christ the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he blessed it, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In like manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is about to be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. This do, as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. We, your children, offer to you, O God, these gifts of bread and wine. We pray that you send your Holy Spirit from both us and these, your gifts of bread and wine, and in receiving them at this table, they might become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we might become one with you and one with one another. Amen. As we go forth from this place, we do so, as Courtney reminded us, that we can trust in God's Word. God's Word shares with us today that we are indeed serving at a table to serve miracles to a needy and waiting world. Let us stand as we receive the benediction this day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Depart today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed and wonderful week, and many, many more of them. Go in peace. <laughs>